yeah, good turkey. We got a bunch of little babies over there too. to go check on the garden it's been a few days since I, I went out of town went to an Aaron Lewis concert which is pretty sweet it's been a while since I could say So my little sister is coming into town today. She's going to be spending a few days up here. I'm going to put her to work. My little sister came up from Alabama to work. So I'm putting her to work in the garden. Say hello to everybody, Lizzie. Hi. <laughs> so we're out here pulling weeds and picking peas while we still can. Japanese beetles. So I bought this trap from them. It's got quite a few in there. I don't know how well it'll work overall. It's basically got this little pheromone uh, thing at the top, and and they just kind of fly into this and fall down, and then they're they're not very good upward flyers, so they just kind of fly side to side and get stuck. So pretty simple trap. But we do have Japanese beetles. For sure now here's the wonderful thing I or I don't know how wonderful it is but uh, it's something that seems to be beneficial if you do have Japanese beetles I haven't seen I've seen I've seen one Japanese beetle on my pepper plants but this milkweed over here there's a reason why I haven't cut it down they absolutely love milkweed there you go they're making a whole new generation great now you're gonna have Japanese beetles you're gonna have all kinds of insects so the, the question is is do you get rid of them can you get rid of them or is there something that they like better than your plants I mean man this is like an orgy over here <laughs> Good grief. there's one there one there one there do you not have any morals? What is, what time is it? My goodness. What is happening? Apparently, Japanese beetles like the morning time. They're big fans of the morning. Whew. My goodness. Yeah. All right, well, I'll leave you guys to it. Enjoy your privacy. I have a struggle with insects that I'm trying to figure out in my head. It's the conundrum of, are they good? Are they bad? Do you get rid of bad insects? Or do you let them live? And if you let them live, what are they going to do? 
Are you overreacting when you see a few Japanese beetles? Making a whole new generation of Japanese beetles, as we can see. But are you overreacting when you say that you want to remove them? Because they're not necessarily good for your garden. They can cause damage for sure. But will they stay away from your garden if they have something else that they prefer? Here, something I found, uh, I heard a long time ago, I haven't done it yet here in this garden, but I need to, is if you want animals to stop eating your fruits, put water out for them. A lot of times, and this happens with humans too, animals are just eating fruit because they're thirsty and they can't find water. Water is not readily available out on the ground for a lot of animals. So they'll come in and they're just really thirsty and they'll eat your fruit to get the water out of it. But if you give them water, they'll be satisfied and they won't eat your, eat your vegetables. So, now, does that mean they'll never do it? No, they get hungry too. But they're less likely to eat when they're really thirsty. By the way, that's a human thing as well. When you overeat, a lot of times it's just because you're, you're thirsty, you're dehydrated, and um, you really need to drink something instead of eating something. So, but they all feel the same to you, really. If you get rid of all the bad insects, you also get rid of the predators for those bad insects because they won't come around anymore because there's none of their food here. And so then you say, well, what are the natural predators for these insects? And then you have to figure that out. Then you can try to attract those predators. And that's going to be better than any pesticide or anything that you use. And we're not against pesticides. We're not against it. It's just who we are. We're not. I think sometimes it's necessary. However, I'd much rather, it's much cheaper and more effective to have beneficial insects that take care of the bad insects for you. I mean, it's kind of a no-brainer. Let nature do it for free, if you can. And you don't have to worry about anything if you're spraying something, you know, like going in groundwater or anything like that. But in the end, I want vegetables. So in the end, I'm not against anything that will get me vegetables, because that's the purpose of doing this, is to grow food. So, but if you have insects that are gonna take some, take some food from you, will they take the whole thing? Or will they just take some? And if they just take some, that's probably enough to sacrifice that to the nature around you. But they can become overwhelming, all right? And they can take all of it. They can do like the uh, cucumber beetle and they can spread disease from one plant to another. And if they spread disease, then they're bad because they can kill an entire plant. And there's only so many plants that you're planting. So you don't want that to happen. But a lot of times when you use pesticides, you're going to kill the beneficial ones along with the bad ones. And that's just kind of the nature of the beast. Hornworms, for instance. Hornworms get all over your tomatoes. They'll also get all over your peppers as well. They'll get over a lot of things. But something I learned last year that I did not know is they have a natural predator in these little mini wasps. Our brachinoid wasps, I believe is the name of them. And these wasps aren't like typical wasps. They don't sting you or anything like that. They're really, really tiny wasps, and what they do is kind of weird, kind of freaky. But they basically almost paralyze the worm, the hornworm, and then, then they lay eggs in it, inside of it. Those eggs hatch, and they eat the worm basically alive. So, pretty vicious for those people who say nature is super nice, and everything in nature is just so peaceful. Now, there's some heinous stuff that goes on in nature. But don't panic if you see some insects 
because you're going to have insects and try to look for other things as well because you may find some insects that are killing those insects. For instance, we have a ton of spiders. If you go over into, into our lettuce over here, you're gonna find a ton of spiders in there. Well, guess what? Guess what can kill and eat cucumber beetles? Spiders, and they will. They would love it. Birds also can eat cucumber beetles, although there's a little bit harder for them too, but they will. So as long as you have a, a fairly healthy ecosystem around you, nature can manage some predators. That being said though, this ecosystem is not designed for beans. Although they'll probably grow pretty well here. Squash, although they'll probably grow pretty well here. This is not made for squash. I can go out into the woods and I will not find a squash plant. So we're pretty lucky people, although it's not luck. It's luck is what, as they say, luck is where opportunity meets preparation. We were prepared people. We were prepared to get this. We were prepared because we were looking for it. We were prepared because we knew the people we knew who showed us this. I didn't find this. A friend of mine showed it to me. And if he wasn't a friend of mine, he'd have never shown it to me. If I wasn't nice to him, he would have never shown it to me. If I didn't work, choose to work where I work, I would have never met him and I'd have never had this place. If I didn't quit the job a while back to try to do something different, I would have never found this place. If I didn't stay at that job for nine years, I'd have never quit that job at the time in which I'd have found the other job in which I would have met this guy, in which I would have become friends with this guy, in which he would have sent me this property in which I would have bought this. Everything in your life is a series of decisions that have consequences that echo throughout your entire life and also the lives of those around you. Because if he never worked at that place, he would have never been there to show me this. And likely other people would not have taken the time to do that. Weird how that all works. Every second of every day, is a decision that you make that positively or negatively affects your entire life. You just don't know it until it happens. You can only know it when you're looking back, not when you're looking forward. So hammock time.